All right, two hours and one shower later. Okay, so I get you guys' questions for advice from the heart and it's super fun to do the show and like make jokes out of them and do the drawings, but you know, I genuinely care about whether or not you guys are okay. Um, so I also want to answer them, you know, with my honest opinion as friends, as friends. I'm giving you my honest opinion as a friend. Um, so let's dive right in. The questions I'm going to be answering will be right on the side and you can click to each one if you want to skip ahead or whatever because this might just be one long video. I don't know if I'm going to cut around in it much. Question one, Christopher Frederick. I find it hard to stay motivated. How can I be more self-motivated? I really do do the to done list. Uh, that was a great sentence. I really do though. Um, it helps me not be so hard on myself, which I feel like is the number one motivation to suck. You know, you start to think negatively about yourself and, oh, I have all these beautiful ideas and I haven't accomplished any of them yet. And that absolutely drains you, you know? So doing it step by step, like the to done list, really helps me personally not be hard on myself and instead encourage myself and give myself a pat on the back. Look, you Hannah, you've already gotten all these things done. For instance, since I made the first video, I took a shower and now I'm making another video. What a great day am I having? I hope your day can be equally wonderful. Question two, Semra. How do you react when someone compares you to another person? Um, that's an interesting question. I think that, you know, in general, you know yourself better than anybody else. Uh, but the one thing that you could take away from a comparison that you don't like is to kind of take note if that comparison happens a lot. Like, let's say your behavior is being compared with someone who you don't really respect. And you think to yourself, wow, am I coming across that way? Do other people really view my actions as that when they're so different in my head? And at that point, there might be a note you can take away for your own criticism, um, but not in a negative way, in a constructive way. I guess that would be my real answer to that. Okay, this is for Reagan. Reagan is the 35-year-old single mom. First of all, don't worry about saying I'm a 35 year old single mom. Age is of no value in this world. I am going to live as if I'm whatever age I feel in my head all the time, which has no number. I don't know how that's relevant, but I'm, I'm sharing that. Um, Reagan, uh, you have a kid, that's great. You're a mom, that's great. You're obviously a great person who cares about their kid a lot. Um, you don't want to meet anybody in a bar. Okay, I recognize that. Totally your choice. I kind of feel that way too. It's really hard to genuinely get to know someone in a bar type setting where all the lighting's the same and you're a little drunk and everybody looks good. So, fair. Um, you don't want to meet anybody in a church. Personal decision. I kind of feel like, you know, places of religious offering are probably good ways to meet like-minded people, but if that's not the case, it's not the case. Um, your last thing is dating websites. You say you don't want to do that either. Dating websites, are pretty great. I don't know what experiences you've, you've had with them. Um, if I were you, I would have a family member or a friend kind of like look over my profile and tell me what I could improve or anything like that or what doesn't sound really like me. Um, but again, if you're not interested in dating websites, then who am I to fault you? Now, I guess with those three things excluded, I would say what I've done personally in the past, not in an effort to like meet someone romantically, but just to bring more people into my life, um, I've done like meetups on meetup.com. It's a great website, super duper. You can go and you can meet people who want to kayak or box or read a book while laying on a field staring at the sky. Um, that is a really good way to meet like-minded people and there's no romantic pressure. So it's not even like you're on a date. You're just in a group of people who all have similar interests. And who knows, you can make a friend there who's Friend of a friend might lead you to your future romantic support. Celine Grossomi asks, how can one be at peace with oneself? <sighs> now this is a tough question and I'm not even going to pretend like I have the answer to it. Uh, I can give you my opinion, but I am in no way, shape or form saying that this is what's right for everybody. Uh, for me personally, one of the best ways for me to find peace or be at peace is to get off all my devices. Like, no computer, no iPad, no phone, no anything. And I go and I take a walk. Maybe I'll bring music, maybe I won't. But for me, one great way of, I guess, quelling the turmoil inside um, is to just kind of observe how much life there is outside of me. And that gives me a real sense of peace.
do to make my life more enjoyable these days? Um, again, only answering for myself, but one of the things that I do when I find to be in a bit of a rut is I take on a challenge or try and learn something that I've never done before. I'm gonna start taking Spanish soon because I've never learned Spanish. Um, but sometimes, you know, finding enjoyment in life isn't just a constant pursuit of pleasure. You know, you don't want just, just dopamine. You just wanna feel good, just feel good, just feel good. Sometimes a great way to be engaged and more active in your life is actually to force yourself to work a little. You know, oh, I'm gonna learn this new thing. Oh, I'm gonna do this challenging experience I've never done before. Oh, I'm gonna go to a strange place where I'm not necessarily comfortable. A lot of times you'll find out more about yourself and kind of form a deeper bond with yourself. You know, as if you were your own best friend and not just the vessel through which you experience life. So that's my answer to that. People getting stabbed in elevators. Asks, I feel all alone in the world what should I do? Um, now, I want to answer this carefully uh, because I don't want anything that I say to get construed as like a negative interpretation. But basically, so do I. And so does everyone. We have no choice but to be alone in this world and everyone feels alone at times. Uh, that's not to say everyone is special, blah, 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 blah. But there is a sense of unity in that isolation, as contradictory as those two statements are. Um, you know, practically speaking, we live in an era of communication and community that has never existed before. You can be in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and able through the internet to communicate with others who have similar interests or similar feelings or similar beliefs or similar doubts and similar fears. Uh, but the first thing you have to do is really connect those things together and then be vulnerable and open enough to share them with others. And it's not, I'm not gonna promise you people are gonna react well, but I can promise you that trying to connect and trying to find a way to feel less alone in the world is going to be worth it, regardless of how long it takes. Um, so I guess what I wanted to say in response to you, people getting stabbed in elevators, is that I hear you. I feel that way too sometimes. And the best we can do is just keep moving forward. And avoid elevators, I suppose. Next question, Kylie Batchelor. How does an extremely shy internet addict make friends in real life? You can totally meet your internet friends in real life. That's completely socially acceptable now. We are past the era of simply IRC interaction and now people are like talking about fanfic on E. Do you guys remember like 15 years ago when that was a shameful, shameful secret? Anyway, uh, Kylie, this will be the last question I answer and I want to tell you that the best way to quote unquote make friends is to just really be yourself and be comfortable with yourself. And I know that's a very eye roll inducing statement, but I kind of feel like a lot of people get caught up in watching themselves through the eyes of others. Like you go to a party and you see how people are interacting with each other and you're like, oh, I'll interact with them like that because I want to be their friend. But that's fake, that's hollow. You know, and they're, even if they don't see through it right away, then you're participating in a friendship that's not really authentic to who you are. Um, so the best way to make friends is to genuinely enjoy your own company and people will gravitate towards you. Being shy is hard because you get nervous. Try and let go of self-judgment. Like if you say a joke or if you make a statement and people don't get it right away, be patient. Be patient with yourself. Don't immediately withdraw and feel embarrassed or defensive, you know? Maybe take time to explain, maybe just move on. It's not the end of the world. You've done nothing wrong. Well, that's it guys. Um, that's it for now. Uh, I am gonna do, to address your questions, I get tons of people asking about being gay, coming out, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I will do like a Hannah the Homo horror story, uh, but I just don't wanna do it today. I'm just not in the mood. But I will do that video and it'll go on this channel and um, also, I get lots of statements about suicide, and I do want to make a public video about that 
Um, so those two topics will be separate videos at some point soon on this channel. Stay tuned. Uh, homosexuality and suicide, what a fun week. Uh, anyway, I hope that you guys got something out of this. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Chin up. Deep breaths. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Get drunk if you can. No, just kidding. Just kidding, not. Who's to say? Who's to say? Hannah's to say. Hannah's to say.